Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Today is Wednesday, right? I think Hump so. Day. I don't know anymore. The weather so outside confused. is so beautiful, I just want to get out and ride a bike. I had like a little spring in my step yesterday morning, this morning, a little cool. The cold front has arrived. The afternoons get a little heated, but it's been fantastic. People have been aw awakening themselves from the dead, right? People are out. <laughs> people are out running. It's funny when we have a nice day. Don't you notice more people are out running in Memorial Park and out doing their thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do think you know, if you're acclimated, you still are out there anyway. What I'll tell you is what's not quite as prevalent. What's that? The state bird. The mosquito. Oh, the mosquito. Yeah, I mean, I, usually I'm covered from head to toe with mosquito bites. They're still know. out there, so. You're still getting bit, huh? Be warmed, oh, always. There was this article on self.com. During this morning's meeting, Courtney was yelling and screaming and pretty much <laughs> stood That's up exactly and how it stomped went. out of the room because she was so disturbed. Apparently, there is some debate over how often we should be washing our workout clothes. I mean, I don't have any idea why this is a debate, because if you wear them to work out, you must wash them. Well, but, but experts say that some items are okay to wear twice. No. <laughs> no. But, but why not, though? Because they stink, and you just sweat in your workout clothes. You're going to put them on the ground, or you're going to put them in a hamper, or you're going to put them back with dirty clothes, with clean clothes, and then rewear them again? No, you hang them up to dry. I have a hard time imagining this myself, because usually my workout clothes are drenched Mine too. from head to toe when they're done. But I think one of the reasons why the experts are saying it's okay to wear some items twice is that if you properly hang them up to dry, mm -mm. then the stench no. causing bacteria <laughs> won't be able to no. grow. What should always be washed, they say, underwear. Oh. Uh, thank you for the reminder. Revolutionary. What? <laughs> Pants or shorts if worn commando. I, what? Who are these experts? I'll be washing my pants and shorts. That's all I'm saying. Oh, and socks. You should be wearing your socks. Wearing them? Wearing them and washing them every single time. <laughs> I, this is, we would love to hear from you, right? Clicktovote.com. How often do you wash your workout clothes? Everywhere should be everyone's answer. If you're healthy, it's better to re-wear workout clothes than to not work out because you don't have clean clothes. Skip the Starbucks and, and let that add up. That's just dumb. But people do wear workout clothing just to go to Starbucks and, you Well, know. that's athleisure wear. Well, <laughs> workout clothes, it's the same thing. I mean, right, but you're just, you're a leisure. I don't care if you're not a sweater. If you have taken a class and you have worked out and you have some sort of moisture on your body, you need to re You need to wash those clothes. Okay, but we have talked about this before on Houston Life. We've talked about the trend of not washing jeans. Remember I told you about my friend Nick in New York City? Yeah. Who put his jeans in the, in the freezer. freezer, right? <laughs> because the idea is you just leave them Freeze in away the, <laughs> the germs. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm trying to make dinner, but the freezer's full of jeans. Full of jeans. Most of our viewers, by the way, are saying that they they wash their clothing after every time they yes. use it. But sorry, I'm pausing because I'm a little alarmed that some people are saying... Unsure. Or, or that they only <laughs> wash them when the clothing starts to smell. Okay. You know what? That, this is time for intervention. This is not good. Well, now, if your clothes are already smelling, throw them away. Like that's, it, you've, you've gone too far. What about the argument though that it's better for the environment to save water and save the detergent and save the energy costs? Will you stop tapping your car please? <laughs> You're making me nervous. <laughs> So people say it's better for the environment to not wash. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm not saying then that Then find I a communal, find a group of people that need to wash their clothes all at the same time. You do one load, one giant load, and you're not doing six loads. I don't know. Wash your clothes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, this is not even a debate. Hey, did you see the reaction also this morning on Twitter? A lot of people are very excited, the fact that uh, the U.S. team did so well at the World Cup yesterday, but there's a bit of a controversy, not because they won, but because of their reaction to winning so many So this points. is the U.S. women's um, team, yeah. and they played Thailand yesterday and beat them, annihilated them 13 to nothing, 13 nil, if you will. And 
the controversy is that they kept scoring the goals and the Thailand team, you know, they're crying and the celebration is happening afterward. Now, what, are, what is your opinion when you heard about this story? Do you, do you have one either way? At all? I was surprised that there was so much controversy about it, to be honest, because I feel like if you win, then you should be able to celebrate however you wish, right? And I do think that obviously sportsmanship comes into play. I never like to see another team getting annihilated and members of the other team were crying. And so I did feel kind of bad, like this is a big deal, they're on the world stage. Not that anyone assumed that Thailand would go and win the whole thing. Right, I mean they were... I don't like to see anyone trampled, but again, I, I think that our U.S. team, they've worked hard. For a lot of these women, it's their first time. It's And a first time for a goal. Stage. Like, if that was my daughter out there You'd scoring the 13th mind. goal, I would have lost my, my mind, right? Like, that's your... Right. I've or, seen you cheering at the boys' baseball. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. So, he, the thing is, though, when you look at what, it, what happens, the differential matters. So, if it comes down to a tie break, let's say between the U.S. and Sweden or something like that, they go to the number of goals. Right. How many goals does the U.S. have versus Sweden? So the number actually matters. It does matter. So if some people are saying, oh, well, they should have just, you know... Not scored. ...relaxed and not scored all of these points, you're saying that's actually a yeah, bad Yeah, they move. need... Because need if it's, if it's going possible. to a tiebreaker and they need, they need that score, those goals... The number of goals. points determines who you play next, right? Yeah. Yeah. And who's seated first. So that, that matters, the differential matters. So there was this huge Twitter war about it. What's interesting is um, Abby Wombach, she's a retired U.S. soccer yeah. team star. You know her, uh, amazing soccer player. So it, she tweeted, imagine being, it being you out there. This is your dream of playing and scoring in a World Cup. Celebrate. Would you tell a men's team to not score or celebrate? Yeah, she makes a good point. But then former U.S. men's national team member Taylor Twelman, he weighed in and he said he didn't have a problem with the score, but the celebrations left a sour taste in his mouth, quoting him right there. So I'm sure the controversy uh, isn't going to last too long, especially because there's so many games left right. to play. Hopefully people can move on. But uh, interesting to see Twitter blowing up this morning. It is, and it's an interesting topic, you know. I mean... It life there are people that come in first and people that don't right so this is a life le you i'm to i tell my boys all the time you have to learn how to be take a loss yeah it's an important lesson it's an important lesson yeah. winning is super easy but when you don't and then you've got cameras in your face god willing they will one day but i'm just saying you have to be able to lose graciously and understand and know like hey this is part of it and I'm not saying the tear the tears are welcomed. I mean, cry because that's an it's an emotional game for those some of those women on that team. That'll be the last time they step out on the soccer field. Oh wow! There's a lot go you know depending yeah. on their age or you know they may never play on that that's stage true. again. When you put it and there that are so way. many people that want to play on that stage. So you, it's just there's so many life lessons that go in on it. So Life is not just about winning. That's a very good point. Yeah. You learn from the losses, too. Okay, why don't we lighten the topic to something that I find really, really exciting. What are we doing? Guys, prepare yourself. Botox. Yes. You know what that? It's Botox for men. Botox for men. And I think we should make a new rule that... Let's just put it out there in the open. No secrets, no stigma. If you have been thinking about doing Botox, I yeah. had never done it until, what, like six months ago, maybe? I think it was that, yeah. And we had Dana and Richard Laconi on our show, and I went to see them, and folks, oh my lanta. It is, <laughs> now I'm, I'm totally hooked. It's great, and for Father's Day, it is a fantastic Father's Day gift. If you're thinking about doing it for yourself, or maybe you're not sure what to get for dad, this is going to be a game changer. I, I think it's great, and I don't, I don't have a problem. I, I think it's awesome. Like if Orlando said, hey, I want to do it, go do it. I mean, I, I think it's awesome. Men deserve to look and feel the best that they want to feel. Well, and the important thing is that you go to someone who knows w what they're doing. <laughs> you know what I love about the Laconis is less is more for them. They yeah. are very, very light-handed, and they listen to you. It's not just one of these chairs that you're kind of they're the assembly line. They're not going to mess up your face. So I've heard. Well, 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I do get Botox. It's good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm okay with that. It's one of our former anchors here at Channel 2. I remember Sarah, she was telling me one day, she said, you know, it's preventive. Even if you don't have deep, deep Absolutely. lines in your forehead, you get it done preventively, and then you, you know, set yourself up for a smooth forehead for life. I'm really 72. No one would ever know. And I'm really 69. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a few years apart, right? Just a few. Just a few years apart. So this is uh, the question that Courtney popped to me yesterday. Do you want to tell the viewers what you asked me? I did. In a meeting. In, in our meeting. Hey, 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 I've got an important question. And what was that question? Would you want to get Botox live on the air tomorrow? And what did I say? Okay. You thought about it for like a second. Did I? Yeah. Oh, that's not how I remember it at all. I thought I answered you immediately. Well, it was in a but you had a slight pause, then you said, okay. And then immediately I had FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, Brandon did, did too. I told him last night and he was like, oh man, I wanted to do that segment. Mm. Go see Dana and Richard. Got okay, to. so that's that's what we're gonna do later on. You're gonna get it show. live on the air. I'm gonna get it, and then they brought in another uh, one of their clients who is going to also get some sort of treatment live on the show. And so, just so you know, so for Botox, it does take a couple days to see the effect, but a filler is sort of what happens immediate. Filler, you know, kind of fills the space, but the Botox is like the numbing. Basically, it paralyzes the muscle. It paralyzes the muscle, and honestly, they offer you a, a numbing cream if you want it, but... Who does that? You don't need it. it it's honestly, a mosquito bite mm. is more painful than getting Botox. So, we're big fans of I'm doing so proud things of you. to... Why? I don't know. I think it's cool that you're doing it on the air. Why not? No I, secrets. I'm an open book. I'm the one that asked you. I love it. You are game for anything. That's what I love about you. No I, matter what, you're like, yep, I'm in. Well just about anything. What do you mean? I mean, I'm not game for anything. Well, you are, you're a good sport, is what I'm saying. Thank you, I'm a good sport, even you if are. my team loses. Eating something, whatever, acupuncture, you're, I roll know. right with it. I know, you like just shoving needles in my face, and today <laughs> will be no different than any other episode of Houston Life. It's also great outside, as we mentioned, I think we should take a little break from Studio B at some point. Oh, I think so, you know why? Because we need a new, refreshing summer drink. We're mm. gonna head outside with Julio, who's the co-owner, and Barisa. You know him, you love him, you've seen him here on Houston Life with Coffee Q. He has refreshing iced tea latte, as well as a lemonade with Topo Chico that will blow your socks off. It's so good. And uh, Channel 2 employees get so excited when Coffee Q truck rolls up because uh, they can stay caffeinated and hydrated and all full. day long. Yes. Okay, so speaking of this great weather and staying cool, how does floating on an outdoor water-filled playground sound? This is so amazing. Houston Live correspondent Lauren Kelly recently stopped by to Altitude H2O to splash into some summer fun. Houston is hot this summer, and what better way to cool off than stepping into this huge, massive floating island here at Altitude H2O. We are in Mosheron today with Madison. She's the GM here. How are you? I'm good. She's staying cool because she's jumped out into that water. Tell us a little bit about this huge floating park. Okay, so Altitude H2O is Texas's largest floating water park. It's uh, 25,000 square feet and um, we got all sorts of obstacles out here. All right, so tell me about some of the most popular parts of the obstacle course. Okay, so here at Altitude H2O, one thing that people love about this is it incorporates our indoor uh, park with the trampoline. Also, the monkey bars gives you a little bit of that playground feeling from back at school. And we have the balance beams and the dome in the middle, which people love to try to get across. People that. love to bounce off and just get flown into the water. <laughs> Absolutely. So you've got a special week going down. It's going to be the grand opening event on Saturday, but you've got a full week of activities wait leading up to it. Yes. So starting on Wednesday, it's uh, family day. So four or more jump for a discounted price. Uh, Thursday, 30% off birthdays and uh, Friday is buy one, get one. 
Um, and then Saturday, we're leading up to the official grand opening. We'll have food trucks, lawn games. It's just going to be a party. But well, we can check your website, your social media Absolutely. for all that info. Absolutely. All right, so one thing I do want to mention, though, you have to be at least six years old. No matter what, even if you're a great swimmer at three years old, you got to be at least six years old to get in. Going to sign a wafer, and then you should be on the way. Of course. So safety is our main thing here. We always have lifeguards on duty. We just want to make sure everybody has a great time and everybody is safe. All right, Madison. We're about to jump in because it's hot. <laughs> Would love it. Uh, I would love it. Go. Can we go after work today, please? I think so. Let's go. For more information, visit our site, HoustonLife.tv. Okay, as we just mentioned, coming up after the break, we'll have two healthy and refreshing drinks to help you cool down this summer. We're going to step outside and be right back. It is such a beautiful day in Houston. We figured we'd have to come outside. Absolutely. Right in our parking lot here at KPRC is one of our favorite food trucks, Coffee Q truck, and also Julio at the helm. Julio. You've seen Julio on Houston Life, by the way, and usually he comes to our studio, but today we're in his house. How are you? What's up, buddy? Hey, come on in. Come Good on to in. see hey you. Guys. I love this, a little behind the scenes inside the truck, but this is all about some fun summer drinks. What do you have here? All right, guys, so today we're going to be doing a, a Chinese golden triangle, triangle black tea with Lebanese mint. Uh, so I went ahead and started doing some of the process because I know we're a little bit short on time. So uh, this right here is going to be our black tea, and this is going to be our green tea. We're going to mix it together. They're beautiful. The it smells the, so the good. The final product is going to kind of look like that. Okay. Uh, Let's go for it. And this is an iced black mint tea latte, right? That's correct. All right. Which we already have brewing here. You just put that tea bag in here. We let it brew. And then what? So then it's going to be two bags. We're going to boil the water, steep it about four minutes. When the fiber milk product is ready, we're going to add the tea to your cup. So just pour over ice. Pour it over ice. Very OK. Nice. And this is going to have a little flavor, which is going to be organic vanilla and cinnamon. Ooh. One. Just one of each. One, you of, each. Okay. one of each. You don't want too much. And then the, the part that makes it a latte, I'm just going to scoot in real, real, real quick. Got to get the almond milk fresh the from almond the fridge. It's so fun to see behind the scenes of your truck. All right, so this is what makes it a little bit a nice latte. This Ooh, is so that's pretty. Beautiful. Go for it, Courtney. Okay, getting in there. Very nice. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, this can be made with any milk. I just think that the almond milk gives it a little extra. Oh, uh, and you know what? It's not too sweet. It's not. It's I like perfect. that it's not too sweet. Okay, we got to fast track your next drink. All this right. This is uh, sort of like a lemonade, but with some topo, right? This is our topo lemonade. So we're going to get some fresh squeezed lemonade. Uh, I went ahead and uh, took the time and uh, squeezed it for you guys. So this is the fresh lemonade. We want to strain, strain it. All right. There we go. Fresh juice. Fresh juice. Yeah. Then what we're going to do is we're going to mix basically half of the juice with some delicious Topo Chico. Got it. And so then if you guys want to go ahead and try that for me. It looks this. perfect. It also has a simple syrup in there. I'm going to pour some in here for oh. you. There you go. I got a share. That's perfect. Go for it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's great to mix it up and, so and change up the coffee routine because usually in the afternoon, people reach for the coffee. And That's true. Topo is always good in the summertime. It's one of my favorite drinks, and the kids oh. love the bubbly lemonade, if you will. Hey, Cheers. guys. I know, Julio, you and Coffee Q, you're around town. Levy Park is one of the best places to catch them. Also, visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website to keep up with Julio and all his goodness. I'm going to go for this latte as well. Cheers, Julio. Great Cheers, to see guys. you. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Nice hey, stick you. around because coming up on Houston Life, we are getting a preview of the humor packed and action packed summer production of The Three Musketeers. And by the way, if you're still looking for that perfect Father's Day gift, look no further. How about some Brotox? Sounds good to me. Botox for Dad. We are not only doing a live demo in studio, but also a special promo code coming up on Houston Life. We'll be right back. Cheers. Awesome. Well, forget the ties and whiskey, or you know what? Just add the ties and whiskey on in yeah, at this Father's Day. Don't skip it. And let's give Dad the gift of looking and feeling younger. Okay.
You are going to love this segment, I promise. Here with more about skin and health treatments. More and more men are doing them, folks. Dr. Richard and Dana Laconi with the Institute of Anti-Aging Medicine and Skin Spa, along with our patient, Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the show. <laughs> okay, guys, so glad you're here. And this is something that for a long time, oh, Botox was whispered because men weren't admitting they're doing it. But you guys see a lot of men, in fact. Yes. It's been going on for quite a while, but it's definitely gaining steam. And it's not just about looking younger, right? Because you guys have CEOs and men who, in the boardroom, don't just want to look good and look younger, but also look maybe more approachable? Never let them see you sweat. Wait, Never yeah. let them know you're worried. I mean, the idea is this makes you relax. It makes you actually a little more approachable because you don't have that knotted up little frown lines, scowl lines on your forehead. Less tired looking. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. All of that. OK, well, let's talk about Jeff, because you're here. You've, you've done some, uh, you're a fan of Botox before, or am I putting words in your mouth? No, definitely a fan. OK, tell me why you wanted it. What, what was the first time that you uh, inquired about Botox? It was kind of a stressful job. OK. Uh, so it helps kind of fade away the stress lines, which is kind of cool. And uh, it takes a little bit of the worry away, too. Kind of yeah. makes you look a little, a little bit uh, happier, also. So. It's a good thing. Okay. I've done about 10 times, I think. This is about 10 times. I've wow. Done. Yeah. Okay. And Richard, what are you going to do today, Andre? Well, we're just going to do his forehead and around his eyes. You know, he's got a little bit of a tendency towards crow's feet, a little bit of these worry lines right through, or concentration lines, if you like to call them. So we're just going to get started. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Go for we'll it. Take it away. And, right. uh, right, and while you're doing it, just describe, Dr. Laconi, how, uh, how the process works. Well, you know, after we kind of you know, clear you for the procedure based on some pretty simple, you know, medical, you know, clearing, then uh, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and uh, check his face for the patterns. And there's no and, venison um, going on. Jeff, you're not <laughs> in any pain, right? No, it's like a small patch. And you yeah. use a very fine needle, This right, is Dr. a Laconi? super fine needle. I like to point out this is a needle that was developed for pediatric insulin. It's 31 gauge. It's so sharp that in many cases you don't even feel it. So um, it's true. You don't really feel it. Yeah. I mean, but but in case someone's afraid of of doing this, you do have a numbing cream that you could use. We right? do actually. Yes, it's you know just to kind of give a little. Yeah. While I, we're working on the forehead and the now. eyes, let's take a before picture of of Jeff. <laughs> and but we're explaining the before picture because that's the thing. You want the surprise. You want the frowny face in there, but to see what is happening with the muscles, right? Diana? That's exactly right. Just to see which muscles we're gonna you know target. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then he's working the side of the face there. These and are the, the for the, the uh, sometimes called crow's feet. Okay. But, uh, yeah. And you may notice too. I mean, there are, like tiny little bumps that form immediately after the application. Right. But that goes away within yeah, in seconds. Minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's a great lunchtime procedure. Oh, this will. absolutely. Yeah. You can go back and it makes everyone happy. Absolutely. Little blood spot here and there, but <laughs> nothing to worry about, folks. And I promise the results are awesome. Uh, Beatrice, do you want to bring in this stool because, as as we promised, I'm going to go for it myself. I started doing Botox, uh, Richard and Dana, what, like six months ago, maybe? Yes, yeah, about six months. I think months that's about right. Mm -hmm. And I ha have loved it ever since. I feel like I'm, I don't know, investing in my future. <laughs> <laughs> Investing Yours in you know, Brandon's future. That, that is exactly what you are doing because the earlier you start it, the better. You don't ever have to have those creases. I mean, yes, it's preventive. It's it's preventative treatment. And is sense. it true then? So you started earlier, right? But over the years, when your muscles stop moving and forming these creases, you need less and less Botox as the years go by, right? It, it yes. can be that way because the muscles will become weaker and just kind of atrophy, so you won't need to do it quite as frequently. You're breaking so, that so muscle so. memory. So it's besides yeah. the Botox, there's also facial fillers, just like women do. Men get the same treatment under the eyes, uh, around the jawline, uh, even lips. Yeah. Um, and I love your approach, Dr. Laconi and Dana. You're, you're very natural. Uh, your patients look very natural looking. Right. So you err on sort of less is more. Less That's is more. Correct. We don't want you to look like a mannequin. We want to see some expression. And uh, so that we try to, you know, kind of study. We also know that when we see someone for the first time, we'll do a little bit less and then we'll kind of, uh, you know, dial it in as we see it's needed. Yeah. Okay, well, get in there. What are we doing? Well, and we <laughs> can see from those before to. and after photos, by the way, it looks completely natural what you guys do. Is that sort of a common fear for men who are thinking about doing Botox, that they don't want to you know, look really, like they've had it? We're going to definitely, you know, interview the person and find out what they're trying to achieve. If they really want no one to know, then we're just going to soften 
the lines. Okay, get that needle in my <laughs> yeah. face. Let's get it. We want everybody to know. No need to Put the needle in my face. Right, uh, and Dana, you just that, Dana? you wiped my forehead with just a little bit of alcohol, alcohol. right? I'm gonna right. Step over here. Yeah, just kind of. How you doing, Derek? In, well, in case you guys are wondering if it hurts, no, it absolutely does not. And this is no numbing right. cream. You didn't put any numbing cream on. No numbing cream. I don't like the numbing cream because honestly, who has time for that? You have to sit there, you wait for two <laughs> minutes while it kicks in, and then, and honestly, there's nothing to feel anyway. So skip the numbing cream, get the needle in. Okay, well, you keep going, Dr. Talk. Lucconi. You guys, of course, the Anti-Aging Institute has been in business for over 20 years. That's you correct. guys are tried and true. Your clients love you. We love you. Let's talk Let's about the special up. offer because all the dads, non-dads, men, women, we all want to get on this, but this is a Father's Day special coming up. Dana, can you help me um, walk through this, what this is? So yes, we have um, Botox for $10 a unit. We're giving $100 off facial fillers, and we have we do testosterone therapy, so we have $100 off that as well. Which is really great, because if you have low T, there's, you're suffering through life and you don't right? need it. That's right. Okay, when we talk about $10 per unit of Botox, what's the average so people understand? The average is going to be anywhere from 250 to... Okay three to five hundred okay and you should see the effects in a couple days oh, right you'll start to see it relax in two to three days and your maximum results in 14 days and after the commercial break I promise these little bumps you're yeah, seeing the on little my forehead, welts. those will be gone well if you look at Jeff his is gone so it's totally yeah. fine yeah. yeah and Jeff you've never looked better oh, you're kind Derek thank you, <laughs> you too, my love. Instantly. You look fantastic. happy Father's Day thanks for coming in <laughs> to schedule your treatment you can contact the Institute of anti-aging medicine they're waiting for your call 713-80 or visit the website, theantiaginginstitute.com. Dr. Lacone, Dana, Jeff, Derek, Thank fantastic. You, Thank you. I, I feel like I'm on the outs here. I'm, you I have total are. Sorry. FOMO. None for you. No time. We got no to take No Botox for you. This is the best job I've ever had, by the way. <laughs> no, Catch the other side after the show. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next on Houston Life, a preview of the Alley Theater's Three Musketeers, a fun summer production for the entire family. And by the way, coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, what would it be like to swim in a pool of of, get this, 300,000 marshmallows? It's true. You'll find out as we take you inside Candytopia. We'll be right back. You look great. Shifting gears now, summer is the perfect time to take the whole family to the theater. What better production to see than the timeless tale of the three musketeers playing this month at the Alley Theater. One of our favorite places. Actor Stanley Andrew Jackson III and Victoria Valentine are joining us now with more about this fun and adventure-filled adaptation. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank this you. is such a great, I love, it is a family friendly. The costumes are amazing. Yeah. Stanley, talk to me about your character and being part of this production. Uh, my character's name is D'Artagnan and D'Artagnan Canyon is this young man who has an, uh, a dream to become a musketeer. So he goes um, from his small hometown to Paris to become a musketeer with his sister. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sister. Sabine, uh, uh, D'Artagnan's sister, she also has a dream of fighting alongside her brother and defending the king and queen's honor. And she wants a big as life as she can get. Yeah. It's a great storyline, and as we're seeing some video from what happens on stage, there's a lot of action, but there's also a lot of humor in the mm -hmm. show, right? <laughs> yes, yes, there's so much humor. Um, I think the show has a lovely quality where it goes in and out of very serious moments, but moments where you can really um, just allow kids to laugh, but also grown-ups to laugh. I, I like to think of it as a marvel for the theater. Um, yeah. yeah. Action-packed, for yeah. sure. And I, I think there's always some sort of memory that adults we can relate to the three musketeers whether it's a cartoon adaptation or a theater where you're saying you know the adults are kind of laughing with the humor yeah. there's something that everybody's going to take away from yeah. it victoria what about you playing sort of this like female go get it girl power role that's pretty awesome yeah it is so fun that she just drops in and decides this is what i want and it's funny along the way because she just demands that everybody uh accept her for who she is and she is not afraid to poke fun at the story that says what is this girl doing <laughs> in the 17th century and she says well it doesn't matter i'm gonna i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna fight and i'm gonna wear a dress also <laughs> <laughs> you guys make it look like so much fun but i know especially these fight scenes i know that's got to be a lot of work because mm -hmm. Being able to convincingly fight on stage, it really is like choreography, yeah, right? Yeah. And you have to be so razor sharp every night. This is rehearsal we're seeing right yes. now? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Stanley had previous uh, sword training, and we both are dancers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that actually helped because it really is like 
It's choreography. Like, it's like a dangerous ballet. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a great way to put yeah. it. I'm yeah. sorry, a former sword training. What was yes. what's the sword training? So I um I got my master's in classical theater um at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama in London, and so um a module of that training we had to um do a, a sword fighting. So um well excuse <laughs> me. I mean this <laughs> role was made for you. <laughs> but there's never what happens if something goes wrong though. I mean the show must go it on, right? Do. It never does. <laughs> no, it's yeah. it's well, always on. Always. It's always <laughs> Always want, and I have, uh, I get to sword fight opposite another woman in the show, mm. which is a fantastic moment. And our fight director brags about how good we are as partners, but it really is just that you maintain the connection and the level of safety. There is a constant ebb and flow of communication, yeah. so it is very safe. Yeah, are they I'm real sure. swords? They yes, are real they are swords, real swords. Um, but they are dull, so there are no sharp edges. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they are real. Uh, but it w even with a dull edge, uh, if you, uh, yeah. yeah, it would still hurt if you got hit yeah. with one. Mm. After the show, I mean, obviously it's a physically demanding show. Yeah. Because you guys are focusing so intensely throughout the production, mm. do you feel just sort of mentally and emotionally <laughs> drained every, I mean, do you go out and drink together? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, we haven't done that yet. No, we're not yet, but it, it is it is draining in a way, but we get so much light from our audience who, um, they are loving it at the moment, um, especially when I can hear a kid laugh because the kids and the adults don't always laugh at the exact same yeah. time. Right. So those those little moments with the kids um, enjoying this show really sort of bring to life everything that we're doing, yeah. I think it's great. I mean, it looks awesome. The costumes, the fight scene, everything. We want to give you all of the information that's coming up for The Three Musketeers. You sure do. There it is on your screen right now. Tickets and showtimes for The Three Musketeers is available by calling 713-220-5700. Or you can visit their website, alleytheater.org. Stanley Andrew Jackson III and Victoria <laughs> Valentine, thank you so much for stopping by. It looks like such a fun show. Thank you for having us. Thank you for, you for having, having us. us. And keep it right here, guys. Still ahead, an amazing animal tale with the Houston SPCA found on this one-year-old stray's wounded paw. But first, you may have seen their trucks around town. Up next, we are spotlighting St. Vincent de Paul and their efforts to ensure every Houstonian has access to basics like food, clothing, and shelter. We'll be right back. Thank you so All much. Right. Well, welcome back. In a city like Houston with a population of millions, many of our communities truly struggle with access to basic needs like food, shelter, furniture, and even clothing. That is the reality. And the Society of St. Vincent de Paul is working to change that. It's all made possible because of the simple kindness and generosity of regular Houstonians. A few years ago, Colleen felt like her world had turned upside down. My parents passed away, so I thought, what am I going to do with everything? When her parents died within just days of one another, Colleen was left with a house full of their belongings. You know, it was just so hard, a house full of memories. How do you let go of this, you know, and I was just struggling. Like many people, Colleen had a hard time with the idea of parting with her parents' things. I'm the middle child, so it's very hard to let go. I'm very sentimental. Yeah. And so I just, I just did a lot of praying to help me to, to, to give because I, I don't need to hang on to all this stuff. I need to give to those who really are in need. Colleen decided to donate everything to St. Vincent de Paul. And then all of a sudden, I felt this peace like this is, this is what was meant to be, and there was no tears, and I just, I did, I felt a lot of relief. Through their retail stores and voucher program, St. Vincent de Paul helps ensure Houstonians have their basic needs covered with things like furniture and clothing. There's tons of ways to help. Marie Schwartz is program director. The society itself is the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. So our span is very far reaching. When people shop at St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores, their purchases can go a long way. I like the idea that we help so many people in, in different areas um, with basic needs. Uh, and I feel really glad to be a part of it. They have everything from furniture to designer clothing, even fine china the proceeds go right back into our programs. But the retail stores are just one component. St. Vincent de Paul also provides things like rental assistance, even a food distribution program. 
This is actually our um, food pantry. Here, food is passed out three times per month. It's the first, second, and fourth Saturday of the month. And anyone can just come in and yes. collect food. Correct. We try to, in our programs, um, have as much protein as possible and produce. We serve between 200 and 500 people in one day. That is incredible. And that requires a lot of volunteers and staff, so that's why we encourage people to come volunteer with us. This location is right off 45, just inside the loop, but it's one of many. The squares represent our um, various churches, and the blue dots represent donation bins, and okay. the apples represent um, pantries. So this parish has a pantry, for example. And a food distribution would take place in each of the pantries? Yes. That really is incredible. I knew you guys had a broad reach, but this map really helps put things in perspective just how far the reach really is. Yes. The heart and soul of St. Vincent de Paul, people helping others. I love it back here and I love working back here. This is Raquel. One of her jobs is to put tags on clothing. And it's easier said than done. Just roll it over. With my feet? You can't push it to the way you, you want it to. How do you steer this thing? <laughs> Raquel. Do you need help? I'm failing. <laughs> For Raquel, this is more than just a job. Before working here, St. Vincent de Paul helped her when she needed it most. A lot of people who come here, they tell me their stories, and a lot of, I hear a lot of similarities in my story and their story, and just tell, letting them know that it's going to be okay. It was okay for me. I got through it, and it'll be okay for them. You'll get through it. What doesn't kill you make you stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each day, Raquel is grateful for this community. Just the love and the gratitude and the appreciation you get is really overwhelming. Just helping them, just, it just feels so good. It does. Yeah. There's no one did your help us so much. So, yeah. yeah. You're making a big difference. <laughs> I hope so. I try. You are. <laughs> are you okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> you have a smile on your face, but I see oh, tears in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, I know some, where some of them are coming from because I've been there. It feels good to be able to give back. Yeah. She helped them out just like they helped me. It feels really good. Now, now everything's good, and these tears are just tears of joy. Tears of joy. <laughs> yeah. Finding joy every day by reaching out to help others. I love this job, and I love the people around. They make you feel so good, make you feel special. Mm -hmm. You are special. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I feel special. Good. Oh, what a great story, Derek, and meeting her and seeing and hearing her story and the impact of what she has received and now paying it forward. Yeah, That's there incredible. was and there was such a great feeling there. I wanted to spend all day there and I can't wait to go back, but there really is such a good feeling when you're reaching out and helping others. And the statistics, by the way, are just staggering. Last year alone, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul provided more than 55,000 people in Houston with direct aid, totaling nearly $12 million. It's life-changing work. You can learn more about it by visiting my KPRC Facebook page, where I've posted a link to their website. And later this afternoon, I will post a link to the story you just saw. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you. Well, still ahead, art, Zydeco music, and free barbecue. All right. Yes, yes, and yes. We're invited. Everybody's invited to celebrate Juneteenth at Emancipation Park this weekend. We're going to have all the details coming up. Welcome back. The Emancipation Park Conservancy is dedicated to maintaining a safe space for the community to come together. And this year's Juneteenth celebration is one event you don't want to miss. Here with more is Executive Director at Emancipation Park, Lucy Bremont. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, we've got to get through everything because there's so much happening this weekend, of course, on Saturday. And let's talk about the history of Juneteenth for those that need a refresher course. So Juneteenth was the day that we celebrate freedom because when Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, two years later, people in Texas heard about it. So we celebrate Juneteenth as an opportunity to say, 
about freedom, but also the conservancy is working on making sure we keep the historical perspective about what Juneteenth is all about. And that's so important because a lot of Houstonians probably pass by Emancipation mm -hmm. Park. They see this beautiful new modern park and they might not realize it's actually one of the oldest parks in the history of the city originally purchased by a group of slaves. Purchased by a group of people right out of slavery, and they congregated at the park so they can celebrate their freedom. And it, and so Jack Yates was one of them. We have Richard Allen, Richard Brock, and those are all what we consider the founders of the park. And so we want to keep that historical perspective. Everything we do at the park, it was newly enhanced about two years ago, $33 million worth of enhancements. We had a rededication, and this year we're doing the same thing that we did two years ago, but we want people to know about the park. We want to know, know about the history. And so we have reenactments. We, we're, we want to keep the historical perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so great that, uh, you know, the restoration happened um, and what is how beautiful that is. And it's set to be basically a premier landmark, right? It, absolutely. It's the first park in the city of Houston, the first park, is, from what I can understand, in the state of Texas. And so we want to keep that his, historical perspective. We pride ourselves in saying we're the of the community, so we're collaborating with a lot of other organizations in Houston to bring the Black Love Fest. Project Row Houses is doing that. We have some community groups will be there, reenactments. Uh, you mentioned the free barbecue, and yes. so that's part of the history, the barbecue and the watermelon celebration. We will have that going on also. So much history there in Third Ward. I absolutely love living in that neighborhood. Let's talk a little bit about what people can expect at the celebration, because the actual date is Wednesday, June 19th. That's yes, the yes. Juneteenth date, but the celebration is happening this weekend at Emancipation Park. This weekend, Park. Uh, June 15th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'll uh, start off with, again, a lot of community groups there. We have a lot of activations. We have two stages. We will have uh, J. Paul Zodico Music. We'll have B.B. King All-Star Band will be there and a lot of local talent because that's what happened in Emancipation Avenue. El Dorado Club way back when a lot of people would come and entertain there. We want to keep that going and so that's what's going to be happening that day. You're also going to do guided tours and is that through the neighborhood? Guided tours through the park. The okay. park has a rich history and a lot of people don't understand um, you know how the park was developed so we want to tell that story so when you come we will have reenactments but we'll also tell the story about the renaming of the park. We'll tell the story about you know founders of the park and where we are now and why we want to keep that history because I would think this year is celebrating our legacy, but we also want to rebuild the opportunity to teach the young people what the park is all about. Absolutely. And by the way, tomorrow night, Thursday the 13th, you have the Youth Talent Show. Yeah, we have a Youth Talent Show, and it's, it's, it's kind of still historical perspective because that's where people would congregate to have talent from the African Americans back in the day. We're going to have a talent show on tomorrow. We'll have the Juneteenth pageant on Friday night. We'll introduce Miss Juneteenth on Saturday and a Juneteenth parade. And that's part of the history. So it's a beauty pageant. Uh -huh. that, well, come and see. I did not realize that was happening. That's so cool. I know. And then also uh, Wednesday, June 19th, Juneteenth, yes. you also have the youth activities going on from 10 to 2. Yeah, so the actual day is Juneteenth. Even though we're celebrating Saturday on right. the 15th, we want to take the opportunity on that day, just like we did last year, to teach the youth in that, do an educational opportunity, teach them all about Juneteenth. We'll have reenactments. We're going to have have Miss Jackie Bostic, who is the great granddaughter of Jack Yates. Now, she did not know him, but through a lot of oral history, she can tell the story about how Juneteenth the guy started. She can tell the story about Emancipation Park. So the kids will hear firsthand from her, Miss Jackie Bostic, Jack Yates' grand great granddaughter. And then we'll have a party. Lucy Bremont, thank you so much for stopping by. We got to leave it there. But in the meantime, you can find a recap of the Juneteenth events happening at Emancipation Park by visiting the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We'll be right back with today's amazing animal tale. Well done. Congrats. Today's Amazing Animal Tale is brought to you by the Houston SPCA. Well, last month, the Houston SPCA's 24-hour animal ambulance rescued a one-year-old stray with a wounded paw. It turned out there was something much more sinister about that dog's injury. Someone had intentionally zip-tied her left paw, and after time, it became embedded under the tissue near the bone, causing an infection, bleeding, and as you can imagine, a whole lot of pain. That is horrible. Houston SPCA veterinarian sedated her before the zip 
a tie was carefully removed. The wound is already looking better, but she will need some additional time for some healing. Tallulah, this sweet, once neglected stray, will no doubt find a compassionate, kind, and loving home. If you would like to learn more about how you can help support the Houston SPCA, visit their website at HoustonSPCA.org. And as a reminder, the Institute of Anti-Aging has a special for Father's Day on Botox, or Brotox, as we called it today, <laughs> when they stuck those needles in my head. 713-807-1000. <laughs> if you would like to learn more and their website is also there on your screen and that's the full special and you loved every needle <laughs> I did and can you tell if you look closely at no, my forehead no it's can you completely tell? yeah no it's done all those bumps have gone away I'm, I'm set for I don't know four five six months where's my chair I want some Tex is biting me because we woke him up from his nap he's all annoyed here do you want to get down buddy sleepy <laughs> <laughs> Poor little man. Okay, Don't forget, you can follow Tex on Instagram where we post all kinds of cute photos. He's stretching. <laughs> <laughs> Not just napping videos, too. Bye. See you tomorrow.